This is like this unexpected thing that just happened. I got into synthesizers and once it started, it just like snowballed. It just synth, synth, synth. Hey, I'm Michael Stein, uh, most well known for being a composer on the TV series Stranger Things, where I also do a lot of the mixing and engineering um, of the music. I as well have a band called Survive. I do the production, or I'm the producer, mixing engineer, and a songwriter. Um, those are probably the two things that I'm most well known for. Music as a career for me really probably clicked or kicked off with composing as an actual career, but there are a lot of things that led up to that point. Like I was always playing around with sound and just kind of learning engineering, sound design, moved to Austin when my band got more popular. Um, before that, I had a studio in, in, Aust or in Dallas with some friends. We would record local rap artists. Um, so that was probably my first foray in like taking it seriously as a career and making being a professional, making money. Formal training is zero. Um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of into that just because the studio is my main instrument and all the just experimentation um, collectively learning and new things and if you're alone all the time making music you don't really need musical language to communicate to other people like w what you're trying to do so that's that's less significant so really it's the training is just practice and experimenting all the time so i would say the way i approach Performing live versus scoring or writing an album, which I would say are more similar, are wildly different. Like, I don't even consider them the same thing. Performing live is a lot more about the ambience and the dynamic and the pace. And like, you go and rehearse like how, this, how, the, how the set's gonna flow and if you're gonna have lights and how all that stuff's gonna interact. Um, and for me, it's just work. Like, cause without formal, without a lot of training, um, and just having like a bunch of analog synths around you, playing a survive show is a lot of practice to remember the muscle memory, relearn all the parts, make sure you can do patch changeovers on like three synths with, you know, pretty drastically different sounds and be ready to cue it up for the next, for the next songs. It is creative in the design and the presentation. Like you, you put a lot of thought into that, but it's not really writing. There's only so much improv that goes into the live set. With composing, it's just a completely different thing. I, I just like to experiment a lot um, in the studio, just create create a lot of new ideas and techniques that I can fall back to. Whether I'm going to use those later in a in a score, or I'm going to use those in a record production. With scoring, it's really hard to know what's going to work until until you actually get the picture. You kind of just try out a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's reiterations of going back and revising, um, changing the sound palette, just trying to figure that out. And once you get the picture, you know what's gonna work. And hopefully you've crafted some ideas up to that point. The record stuff is, you know, a lot more tedious. You don't have any supporting element, like the music in a score just supports the film. So it doesn't have to be 100% of the thing. Um, same with like writing a pop song or something, the backing track is supported by the lead vocalist or the lead melodies or the top line. So without that, Survive has to kind of carry the whole narrative and all the elements and do like little earworms and little sparkle moments that keep it interesting and keep it moving because it's instrumental. So the process for film or TV can very much differ, especially on like the genre of the show. With Stranger Things or something like like that, it's you know it's like action, sci-fi, um, drama, comedy. It's just across the spectrum, but really getting the tone and like the palette of sound and the the color of the music is really important to kind of define. It's almost like just defining some some rules. Um, that the things the music is not gonna do. With film, it's very similar. You know, it's like one episode of TV or one and a half. It, it might just be an hour and a half of music, but it's really important to find, like create that world. Sometimes it's just like creating some sounds 
they could just be drones or single notes or it could be like a three note repeating motif or just something really simple and if you have enough of these pieces and they start clicking and working then you kind of know what direction to go i absolutely love this whole era of korg like the early um kind of univox crossover stuff like the Korg 770 back there is probably one of my absolute favorite Korgs. It's super quirky and has like the best sounding ring mod. Um, 770, just they sound so good from that same line. It's like the Poly Ensemble and the PS series. Just so good. I, I can't really explain it. But like the, mo the Monopoly can just be so futuristic, do such cool technical stuff, and it can also just sound really classic. I actually use the Wave Station quite a bit in scoring for like sci-fi or just cool pads, eerie pads and, and stuff that I want to like cut and sparkle kind of through, um, give a different texture on top of the analog stuff. Cork, cork stuff's great. For me, I like hardware. I like something I can interact with. So it's super important that I have something I know my way around really well that has enough features that it, it can get weird. It can do polyphony. I can detune it and make some atonal sounds with it. Um, maybe have an onboard sequencer, just something that I can get a lot of ideas out and, and I'm happy with the sound. Uh, and then second to that, I would say, you know, just working in a DAW that you're very comfortable with, just knowing your way around. Templates are really important. Setting up templates, um, at least for getting, if it's not going to be to just get an idea or maybe like having a bunch of templates for certain almost like genres. So I would say composers and uh, must have, you should probably build out some organized templates or find some online you like. Share your music because I know it's really easy to be just making stuff all the time, like second guessing it or only having a select few people you send it to. So I would just not be discouraged to just share your music because anything you make, there's someone out there that's gonna like it. So I would just put it, put it public for as many people to hear it. And then I would also just practice like experimenting with stuff, especially unconventional techniques and writing music you're not comfortable with or writing music that's uncomfortable or music that's not musical. Just like, I think it's really important to find a new way to do the same, to like accomplish like the same thing, like in a score, like an action scene or a sentimental scene or a horror scene. It's like something that gives you like a unique voice or personality like there's so many like rule, like generic ways to do stuff that everyone uses. So finding a new way to do it, um, it I think is, is a really cool approach. I've noticed that since around the time that we got to do Stranger Things and, and Stranger Things was kind of like a big shift in, in the direction of uh, score and like how bold or how forward music would be or just being less symphonic. It's becoming more of a trend again that people are looking for these contemporary sounds or these like new ways of scoring stuff or being more youthful or just new techniques and production houses are more open to it and directors. So yes, it's getting more competitive for artists maybe, but there's just so much being made um, with digital streaming, um, that platform that I just think there is an opportunity for a lot of people to, to have like their own unique sound and voice and get into it because it has become a lot more accepted to, to be an unconventional composer.